It was right after I bought a house with a garden. My husband and my mother-in-law both smirked and unilaterally declared they would be moving in. They are moving in. If you don't like it, I'll make my son divorce you. If my mother-in-law was coming, that mean and nasty sister-in-law of mine would definitely come too. They knew I would hate it, yet they did this anyway. The harassment that would continue at the new place made me shiver unintentionally. I don't want to. I have no intention of living together there. What? You don't seem to understand your position. My mother-in-law raised her eyebrows. What she took out was a divorce form, already signed by my husband. Her face said that as long as she got the house, she didn't care about the rest. The strategy worked frighteningly well. I desperately held back my laughter. I wondered how my shaking, hunched figure looked to my mother-in-law, who seemed triumphant. I solemnly signed the divorce papers, packed my bags, and left the dreadful house of my in-laws. The day I moved out, I received a relentless call from my former mother-in-law. Have you realized it yet? The former mother-in-law insisted on meeting and talking. It was exactly what I wanted. I would meet her and end it with my own hands. After making meticulous preparations to punish them, I headed to the battleground. My name is Tracy. I work in an office at an advertising agency. It was a newspaper company's section chief who introduced me to Sam, my husband. Being in a vulnerable position, I couldn't refuse the section chief's proposal. At 29, after dating for six months, I gave in to Sam's persistence and got married. I would curse myself for misjudging the crucial moment for a long time afterward. I think Diane, my mother-in-law, intended to deceive me from the start. She seemed calm and kind, but her attitude changed completely once I married into the family. She dropped the mask of an understanding. Older woman and showed her true nature as a demonic mother-in-law. Hey. Tracy, what are you dawdling for? Didn't I tell you to weed the garden after you're done with the dishes? There wasn't a day when my mother-in-law's screeching voice didn't echo in the house. I was fed up every day. Just responding with a sigh-filled answer was all I could manage. After getting married, I agreed to live with my in-laws because my husband begged me to. His father had passed away due to illness. And his mother had been struggling with a leg pain for many years. He said he couldn't bear to leave his elderly mother alone in the old family home. But, what do you know? Despite her supposed leg pain, my mother-in-law walked around easily. She insisted that educating her daughter-in-law was a mother-in-law's duty. And was harsh on me every day. And my husband was no better. Even when I wanted to live separately, he just made excuses and ran away. He was always under his mother's thumb. He never defended me when my mother-in-law scolded me. Sorry. My mom's quite hot-tempered. Don't just laugh it off. Help me. I'm really suffering, you know. After getting married, I started feeling intense anxiety and depression. I would find myself crying unexpectedly or suddenly feeling sick. After visiting a specialist, I was diagnosed with adjustment disorder. Realizing that living with my in-laws was having a negative effect on me was truly unpleasant. My mother-in-law, uncaring of how I felt, continued to make unreasonable demands. Don't be lazy just because it's your day off, will you? Have you finished cleaning the room? And you haven't done the shopping yet, have you? Check the discount stores before you go. Please wait. Mother, please don't rush me. I have a headache. I'll make sure to get the cleaning and shopping done later. Don't be so spoiled. Do what you're told immediately. You're a daughter-in-law, aren't you? A wife is not a housekeeper. I wanted to retort that. Especially frequent were demands by my mother-in-law regarding household chores. Clean the gutters. Wipe the doors. Fix the splinters on the pillars. 
The family home was very old and falling apart in places. It creaked with every gust of wind. Each time, my mother-in-law urged my husband, please hurry up and build a new house. This place is a rental to begin with. We're renting it cheap from an acquaintance. Wouldn't you want to live in your own house, freely, just once? Don't you think so, Sam? I do think so. But with my salary, it's impossible. A home of our own is just a dream within a dream. My mother-in-law, frustrated with her incompetent son. Naturally, that irritation was directed at me, his wife. Cook meals. Clean the house. Weed the garden. Take me to the doctor. I'm exhausted from a full-time job, but that doesn't matter to them. It's no wonder I ended up with adjustment disorder. That was my daily life, impossible not to feel this way. Half a year after starting to live in the family home, a woman came and made my difficult life even harder. Kate, my sister-in-law, divorced returned home along with a child. She was kicked out after being told, I never want to see your face again. Or something to that effect. Well, it was my fault. I left the kid alone and slept with my husband's senior. What kind of moral compass does this woman have? Seeing my dumbfounded expression, my sister-in-law smiled slyly. Just like her mother. My sister-in-law did nothing around the house and even had me clean her room. Can't help it, right? I'm raising a child after all. You wouldn't understand since you've never had one, but it's harder than it looks. So, Tracy, I'm counting on your support. My sister-in-law didn't work. She lazed around all day. Taking care of her child was done half-heartedly at best. She just laid on the sofa, loafing around. Her behavior was especially bad on weekends. She'd leave her young daughter with me and go off to the casino. Kate had bad friends from her wild days, and they would gather to drink from the afternoon. If only she would share in the household chores a bit, but she did nothing. She was the kind of woman who would do anything to get money for her leisure. This happened once. One day, my sister-in-law handed me a drawstring bag, and when I looked inside, that's from our father. Cufflinks, rings, a vintage lighter, and so on. What? What am I supposed to do with this? You're slow. Sell it. And make sure you get a good price, all right? These were belongings of their late father. Essentially, they were all mementos. And yet, my sister-in-law casually told me to sell them. I felt so sad. The thought of her using the money to gamble made me feel even worse. I couldn't bring myself to do it, so I explained the situation and handed the bag over to my husband. What he did with his father's mementos, I don't know, and frankly, I don't want to know. When my sister-in-law first returned, really a lot happened. My things started to disappear frequently after she came. It was around that time I found out my husband was apparently having an affair. A friend who works at a different advertising agency happened to see him. On the street during a weekend. He was walking arm in arm with a flashy-looking young woman. When I heard this, I was furious. I'm busy working from morning till night even on my days off. And you're out playing with young women? That's unbelievable. It's an affair, isn't it? Who is she? Tell me the truth. No, it's not an affair. She's just a hooker. How is that any better? Can't you, a married man, stay away from places like that? My sister-in-law watched our exchange and laughed uproariously. As for my mother-in-law, she seemed appalled but didn't scold my husband too harshly. According to her twisted sense of morality, if a husband frequents those kinds of places, it's because his wife isn't devoted enough. Getting all worked up over something like that, how embarrassing. The fault lies with you. It's because you, as his wife, aren't devoted enough to Sam that things like this happen. I don't think so. 
Mother, isn't that a bit unreasonable? In this house, that is common sense. Besides, visiting brothels or having affairs, that's just a man's nature, isn't it? Being able to forgive that much is a wife's duty, you useless wife. It seemed that what was common sense here was nonsense elsewhere. Forgive brothel visits or affairs. There was no way I could do that. My frustration only grew. I couldn't just sit by and do nothing in this unpleasant situation. I decided to take active steps to do something about it. Afterward, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law remained the same as ever. Day after day, they treated me like a servant. Like walruses, they sprawled on the sofa or the floor, and when they got hungry, they raised their voices. Hey! Why isn't lunch ready yet? It's already noon. Don't dawdle, okay? Tracy, you're so slow, it's annoying. Then why don't you make it yourselves? I've been constantly on the move without a moment's rest, cleaning the garden, airing out the mats, shopping. Don't talk back like that. You need to understand your place as a wife. It seemed even voicing my opinion wasn't allowed. Frankly, I was fed up. I wanted to get a divorce as soon as possible. But if things could have been settled that easily, I wouldn't have been suffering so much. It was the section chief who had introduced my husband to me. From the newspaper company, I owed a lot to. I had also been asked by my boss not to do anything that would embarrass him. Infuriatingly, my mother-in-law was well aware of this and often used it against me. I was completely stuck. For a while, all I could do was endure. Then, one day, my husband's affair became an undeniable fact. A friend from another company in the same industry got hold of irrefutable evidence. This prepared the first stage of my plan. It was time to make the next move. I think it was about a month later. After dinner, Kate spread a housing catalog on the table. It was unmistakably the one I had kept in my bag. Look at this. Sister seems to have been planning to buy a house. Wait. Did you rummage through my bag? Why would you do that? Just be quiet. Oh. It's a bit in the countryside, but it's not a bad house. Hey, hey, Tracy. You should have consulted me about this kind of thing. The house I had my eye on was one with a garden. As my mother-in-law said, it was in the countryside, but it looked quite good. I had actually visited the place several times and met with the real estate agent. When I honestly opened up about it, all three became even more interested. What? You've already gone that far in the discussions. You're buying it. It's cheap and spacious, not bad at all. Sam, a man needs to be bold what? But, a house with a garden, huh? It's a tough choice. If you're going to be the lord of your own castle, mom will support you. I might even help out a little. You don't plan to live just the two of you, leaving this house, do you? Without me having to do anything, my mother-in-law goaded my husband. What a hypocritical way to put it. As if they had any intention of letting me go that easily. When I asked what would happen with the ownership if we bought it, my husband frowned. I'm the head of the household, right? It's going to be in my name, of course. Then, we can proceed with the discussions? We're buying this house and leaving here, the two of us? All right, I understand. I'm a man. Let's buy that house. Hurry up and move forward with it. Finally, my husband firmly said so. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law praised his decision together. However, I didn't miss it. The two of them exchanging glances and smiling. A few days later, right after purchasing the house in the countryside with a garden, my husband and mother-in-law, both smirking, unilaterally declared their intention to move in with me. They are moving in. Huh? But we were supposed to leave this house and live just the two of us. 
after thinking it over, we decided it's best to live together after all. You wouldn't say no, would you? If you refuse, I'll make my son divorce you. I wonder what your boss would say. There it was. Such a cowardly tactic. If my mother-in-law was coming, my sister-in-law would surely follow. Thinking about the harassment that would continue at the new place made me shiver. Absolutely not. I have no intention whatsoever of living together there. What? What are you talking about? You don't seem to understand your place. My mother-in-law raised her eyebrows, her temples bulging with angry veins. What she took out was a divorce form, already signed by my husband. Her face said that as long as she got the house, she didn't care about the rest. If you really hate it that much, then here. Sign here. Yes, I will sign. I'll get a divorce. I've had enough. What? Hey, hey, Tracy. Are you sure about this? Leave her be. Such a stuck-up and useless woman, living with her is just infuriating. You're young, you'll find a new wife soon enough. Such terrible things to say. I solemnly signed the divorce papers. My mother-in-law was triumphant. She had no idea how I felt. The strategy worked frighteningly well. I desperately held back my laughter. A few days after I moved to my new apartment. My phone was bombarded with calls from my former mother-in-law. Checking the calendar, it was as I thought. Today was their moving day. Have you noticed yet? The ringing wouldn't stop. Persistent calls. Typical of my former mother-in-law. Ignoring it didn't help, she kept calling. Finally, I decided to answer. She didn't even greet me, just started yelling. You. How dare you do this to us? What kind of a place did you trick us into buying? Long time no see, mother. Please calm down. What are you talking about? I don't understand what you mean. Don't play dumb. I'm talking about this house. You knew this was a defective house when you bought it, didn't you? That's it, isn't it? It must be. Indeed, the house I chose had issues. The ground itself was weak, often leading to land subsidence. Even if it was a new building, doors and sliding doors might not close properly within a few years. There were old coal mining tunnels running nearby, which caused the issues. However, to the locals, this was common knowledge. They built their houses on stable land. It was only the naive newcomers who faced trouble. This time, I used such a problematic house to trap those three. It was a struggle to find a reasonably priced defective house with the help of a real estate agent. Of course, having my former sister-in-law steal the real estate catalog from. My bag was all part of the plan. I intentionally placed my bag where it was easy for her to see and steal from. Without knowing she was walking right into my trap. They moved out, all three of them without suspecting a thing. Holding back laughter when signing the divorce papers was hard. I wanted to tell her everything, but that wasn't an option. I feigned ignorance. A defective house. That can't be right. Are you sure there hasn't been some mistake? What's with that tone? So insincere. Anyway, come over here right now. Huh? No, thank you. Honestly, I never want to see any of you again. What? What did you say? There was no way I wanted to meet with a family. Of monsters who refuse to understand common sense. I told them that even if they offered me money, my answer would still be no. Then, my ex-husband, Sam. Took over the call from my former mother-in-law who had clicked her tongue in annoyance. Come on, Tracy, please. Just try to understand us a little. I'm going to return those words right back at you. Sam, have you ever considered my feelings, even a little? 
You haven't, right. I was always left isolated, wasn't I? I'm sorry. I really am. Where are you now? Tell me where you moved to. As if I would tell you. If you come over, I'll have to move again. I just want to cut ties with all of you. The conversation remained at a deadlock. Eventually, my former mother in law and her family began making even more outrageous claims. They said the divorce was invalid, claiming they were still family. I had gotten signatures from two colleagues as witnesses on the divorce form and submitted it to the city office. The divorce invalid? No way. How unreasonable can these people get? Anyway, let's meet just once to talk. We're getting nowhere like this. Right. I'm also asking you, Tracy. Just once. Let's settle everything then, okay? Despite my refusal, my former mother-in-law and ex-husband, insisting we meet, would likely call again even if I said no. I had no choice then. Let's meet them and end this for good. Fine. I'll meet you, but just this once. Thank you. I really appreciate it. But, I'll decide the place and time, okay? I didn't want them lying in wait or following me. I had to maintain some advantage, or who knows what they might do next. After thorough preparation, I called the three of them to a cafe. I arrived 20 minutes late on purpose. My former mother-in-law and sister-in-law were already fuming when I got there. And my ex-husband could only offer a wry smile. They were just as I expected. How dare you make your elders wait. Truly inconsiderate. I don't want to hear about being considerate from you. What do you want? What's with that attitude? You're infuriating, really. Because of you, we ended up with a defective house. And it's been a nightmare. You need to take responsibility. As I said, I don't know anything about that. It was you who decided to move in together without consulting me, right? My former mother-in-law was at a loss for words. She couldn't deny that. She and her daughter had willingly jumped into the trap of living in a defective house. Apparently, the owner of their previous residence started renovation works. Meaning, they had nowhere else to go but that defective house. If you're done, then it's my turn. Mother, I will be seeking damages from you. I'm also going to sue you. Be prepared. What? Damages? Sue. Why would you do that? What have I done to you? Speak clearly. You've caused me immense psychological distress. Driving me to the point of developing an adjustment disorder. I showed them a copy of the diagnosis I had received from the hospital. They looked at it intently, especially my former mother-in-law, who was utterly shocked. She probably never imagined I had seen a psychiatrist. You never thought about how your harsh words could hurt someone, did you? I suffered a lot. I felt sick to my stomach and cried a lot, it was really tough. That's because you're weak. It's your fault for being such a terrible wife that you were criticized in the first place, isn't it? Isn't it? That too. The constant calling me a terrible wife. You know, that's considered defamation, right? It could lead to a year in prison or a fine of up to $3,000. What? That's exaggerating. What's exaggerated about it? My former mother-in-law didn't understand anything. How sinful her actions had been up to now. How terrible it is to verbally abuse someone and cause them suffering. You've done things that could be subject to criminal penalties. Mother, you threatened me several times by saying you would tell my boss about the divorce, right? That counts as extortion. Come on. Isn't that a bit too dramatic? It's not dramatic at all. Just so you know, the penalty for extortion is imprisonment. For up to two years or a fine of up to $3,000.
I'm not backing down, just so you're aware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute, wait. My sister-in-law cut in. She looked more intimidating than usual. Maybe it was her ex-delinquent expression. A look that said she wouldn't be intimidated by such threats. Listening to you talk, it's like. You're taking advantage of our mom's ignorance and scaring her. Do you have any proof that you were insulted or threatened? Yes, I do. Because I've been recording everything. What? Recording. Yes, I had been using the voice memo feature on my smartphone. All the time I spent at my former in-law's house. There's quite a bit of audio recorded. I had prepared data extracted specifically from parts. Where I was subjected to verbal abuse by my former mother-in-law. Submitting this as evidence would almost certainly confirm the charges. Of defamation and extortion. Did you think I would just take it? Not just you, mother. Kate, you too. You'll probably be held accountable as well. What? Why me? What have I done? Why don't you think about what you've done? You've committed crimes, haven't you? Or are you saying you haven't done anything to trouble me? As if. Don't be ridiculous. My former sister-in-law insisted she was innocent. I showed her the screen of my smartphone. Her face went pale in an instant. No wonder. What was shown was a scene of her rummaging through my bag. The ugly sight of her looking around furtively as she searched its contents. What's that? How? When did you record that? Since you arrived, my things have been disappearing frequently. Cosmetics, accessories, clothes, bags. I set up a hidden camera. The worst. What are you doing on your own? The nerve, as a daughter-in-law. Astonishing. Who's the one acting without permission? Shall I tell you about the penalty for theft? Imprisonment for up to 10 years or a fine of up to $5,000. I'll be contacting the police later. My former sister-in-law was at a loss for words. She wanted to retort but couldn't. She appeared utterly helpless. I had kept track of what was missing from my belongings. With an accurate understanding of the damages. Both the police and a lawyer would be able to act more easily. When it comes to taking action, I go all the way. I had decided not to forgive these three people. Now, the last one to face my gaze was my ex-husband, who shrugged. Of all the unforgivable acts, his were the worst to me. I thought marriage was about supporting each other. But it seems you had a different idea, Sam? From the beginning to the end, you were always my enemy, weren't you? Enemy, no way. I didn't mean that. Not at all. I believed you. Even today, I was trying to mediate as best as I could. Yeah, yeah. Enough with the lies. I don't need your mediation. My ex-husband was a spineless opportunist. Always siding with the stronger party. Just as he had always sided with my former mother-in-law and sister-in-law. Even now. Trying somehow to appease me, hoping to be the only one forgiven. If only he had been a more decent man, perhaps our marriage could have continued. If he had said we should start anew elsewhere, just the two of us, perhaps I would have agreed. Your affair partner's name is Maggie Irving, right? What? Ah. Uh. How? How did I know? Because I had someone look into it. I have a friend who's good at that sort of thing. I also have photos of you and Maggie entering a hotel together. Look, here. Whoa. You don't need to show that. No need to show that. As I tried to show him the screen of my smartphone, my ex-husband hastily blocked it. He didn't want his affair to be seen by his mother and sister. As if it mattered. Morality and ethics have long been broken in all three of them. 
They're that kind of family. I put my smartphone and the copy of the diagnosis back into my bag. There's no more evidence that I need to show them. My former mother-in-law, ex-husband, and former sister-in-law seem to have lost the will to fight back. They were afraid of being reported if they did something careless. Too bad, I was fully intent on consulting the police regardless of their actions. I think the police will be visiting you soon. It would be best not to run. The charges might become more severe. And make sure you don't follow me. Understand? Tracy. Don't be so cold. We were husband and wife until recently, right? Yes, that's true. Honestly, I think marrying you was a huge mistake. I feel relieved now that we're no longer together. And if you do follow me, I'll sue you for that too. I made them promise not to wait for me in front of my company. To contact me only if absolutely necessary, and then I left the cafe. After I left, the three of them remained downcast. Word gets around. The story of my ex-husband's divorce quickly spread throughout his company. Along with the reasons being his affair and how he treated his wife. As a result, my ex-husband was quite ostracized at work. The matchmaker for our marriage had been the chief. Of a newspaper company we did business with. It was only natural for my ex-husband to be viewed harshly after betraying that trust. Unable to endure the hostile environment, my ex-husband eventually resigned. He struggled to find another job, and his relationship with his mother and sister began to sour. He appeared in front of me again about a year after our divorce. When I turned around after being called on my way home from work, there stood a ragged man. Sam. I didn't recognize you at first. You'd say that. My facial expression has changed, they tell me lately. He seemed to have gone through a lot. Understandably. My former mother-in-law and sister-in-law had been convicted and fined. I had sued my ex-husband for damages. They must be struggling financially now, having to pay the mortgage for the defective house. No doubt a tough situation. How are your mother and Kate doing? They're alive. Barely managing. They both had to start working. Can't make ends meet otherwise. They always say they want to go back to how things were. Wanting to depend on our earnings again? Just like before. Want to go back to the days when you depended on your and my earnings to live? Seems like you haven't changed at all. Like parasites. Cutting ties was absolutely the right decision. Instead of talking back, he didn't. My ex-husband sighed deeply and apologized to me. I'm really sorry for everything. I've been reflecting deeply. I was foolish. You were right, I should have always been on your side. I was out of my mind. Thinking you all were out of your mind from the start seems about right to me. Don't say things like that. Please, let's live together again. I'll cut ties with that family for good. I'm serious. You're all I have. Oh really? That's unfortunate. I already have someone else. I have no call for you, and even if I didn't have anyone, I would never want to start over with you. After I said that firmly, my ex-husband collapsed to his knees. But any performance meant to elicit sympathy at this point was futile. If I were a bit less civil, I might have spat on the ground right there. I left my ex-husband behind and made my way home. After that, he never contacted me again. The one who informed me was the real estate agent I had come to know. The life of my former mother-in-law, ex-husband. And sister-in-law had reportedly become quite tumultuous. They blamed each other for their impoverished life, worsening their relationship. From their house, almost every night. One could hear arguing voices and the sound of breaking glass. They blamed and tormented each other, yet couldn't leave one another. It was hellish. 
they became quite isolated in the community, with nobody willing to associate with them willingly. Eventually, they would probably sell the house, not for much, and end up wandering the streets burdened with debt. In my mind's eye, I could see them huddled together under the cold sky, cursing each other. Someday, I'd like to witness their miserable state firsthand. As for me, I'm leading an unbelievably happy life now. Thanks to the new person I started dating that I mentioned to my ex-husband. He's a successful salesman at a major trading company. He's a mature adult who can respect others' values, with a calm personality. And he's also a divorcee like me. Soon, we plan to have a modest wedding ceremony. The first marriage was a tremendous ordeal for me. Even now, I sometimes feel like crying when I remember the hardships. But whenever I'm close to my current partner, my heart warms instantly. This is where I belong. It took a roundabout way, but I finally found my place. Having gone through tough times, I believe I can be kinder to others from now on. I want to live positively and brightly, using my experiences as nourishment. That's how I feel these days.